Hi, everyone. Um, thank you to our moderators, uh, Bridget Shem and Laura Miller, and to all the organization uh, team. Um, I'm a PhD candidate at McGill University School of Architecture, and I will be finishing um, my dissertation this academic year. My research is on the role of mobility in the lives and practices of women architects and urban planners. I study a group of pioneering women um, from Canada, the United States and England in the mid 20th century, namely Blanche Lemko Van Ginkel, Mary Emery, Jean Walbridge, Jacqueline Turret, Denise Scott Brown and Alison Smithson. I'm curious to see how as designers, travelers, authors, educators and critics, women brought issues on architecture and mobility to broad audiences. My research develops in five themes. I examine women's stories with cars and automobility. I analyze their narratives and in, in which uh, they explored ways of seeing on the move. I look at the travel of knowledge that they instigated through various research projects. And I analyze urban mobility projects and architectures of travel that they designed. And finally, I look at uh, their transnational design exchanges in foreign contexts. I think Lemko van Ginkel is a perfect case in this discussion, as mobility constituted a major theme in her professional life and personal story. Significantly, she traveled to Europe after her graduation from McGill in 1945 and worked in offices in England and France, famously in Le Corbusier's office. But I'm also very intrigued by her engagement in mobility on a theoretical level and also in design as an architect and planner. Mobility, enabling movements people was something to which she was dedicated in, uh, with, in collaboration with her uh, husband and um, professional partner, Sandy Van Ginkel. The circulation projects, street designs, public transits and roads, airports, cars, pedestrian movements, architectures of travel and tourism, and so on. And the ways in which she tackles this issue in her writing was very significant. She was very progressive. I moved to Canada from Turkey to start my PhD uh, at McGill University in 2014. This was around the time when Ko Van Ginkel was awarded an honorary degree of doctorate by the Faculty of Engineering. I knew I wanted to do something about mobility and travel and women, and, and I wanted to learn more about the Canadian context. I knew close to nothing. As I read and heard of some details of her life and work, I was intrigued. I was sitting in the archives at the CCA where her material is so well documented. And what I had in mind was to look for movement, mobility, travel, anything to do with it in the folders in the Van Ginkel Associates collection. I started threading my way through traces and in the end, it turned out that this was not a difficult task. With each folder I opened, I found more than I expected. Fascinating examples of their work in various scales and forms from all around the world. A number of circulation projects in the United States and Canada, airport studies for Montreal, as well as Jamaica, Venezuela, and Brazil, and aviation uh, center in Sri Lanka, among others. The same was true of her writing as she was a prolific critic and author. I decided to work on a chapter on cars and women, and there she was editing a Canadian art issue on cars or comparing the batteries of electric vehicles and the Canadian architect. I was working on circulation and communities and neighborhoods. Elsewhere, she was writing, I quote, circulation is the very life of a city. Without movement, the city cannot exist. At the same time, she was seeking for inclusive plans with an elaborate sensibility towards architectural heritage. And this was happening in the face of the period's culture of demolition for urban renewal. CCA folders include her numerous interviews too. These documents allow us to see her more personal views on the link between mobility and urban landscapes. One is from the Montreal Star. Her approach to auto age architecture, for example, was not one sided. She loved the car, yet she critically examined its role in society and architecture. In another interview in the Gazette, she was telling how terrified she was as a young women planner at the time to tell older men what to do with their city. 
Indeed, she was a trailblazer and an activist. But in the way I see her, she urged to create dialogues without assuming universal knowledge attained through a gender or professional authority. Her work on mobility was what attracted me to her, something that shaped my image of her. Being an enabler of people's movements was something that defined her in my opinion. Mobility formed an important part of her professional identity, perception, and practice. And her relationship with architectural mobility definitely sets an example of how, by designing and writing, women carved out new roles for themselves within the profession. Mobility was a modern issue. It defined a period. Indeed, there was a global frenzy with auto and aero mobility, machines and technologies of movement in the post-war period. And Lemko van Ginkel was an age of change. She was a pioneer with her critical insights, intellectual expertise, and design work. And it, it has been a very exciting journey for me to be doing this research on her. Thank you very much for your attention.